We're going to do the following example. Exclude leap years from the following calculations and assume each birthday is equally likely. The first question is to determine and interpret the probability that the randomly selected person has a birthday on the first day of a month. It's important to note that when we randomly select a person, all days of the year are equally likely to be that person's birth date. So for this reason, we're going to use classical method of computing probability. It's also called equally likely probability formula. So let's first write this question using notation. So P stands for probability, and we want to find probability that randomly selected person has a birthday on the first day of a month. Okay, first day of a month. To use the equally likely probability formula, we have to set up a fraction. Now, the denominator of this fraction would always represent the total number of possible outcomes. So let's think what that number might be here. So all possible outcomes. So when we ask a randomly selected person, when is your birthday? What are the possible number of the answers that person can give? Well, it can be January 1st or January 2nd or January 3rd and so on and so forth. So how many options are there? Well, these are all days of the year, right? Um, since we're excluding leap years, it's going to be 365 possible answers, right? 365 days. That's the number of days in a year, 365. That is number of all possible outcomes. outcomes. That's always the denominator. And now what is the numerator? Numerator of the formula is the number of desired outcomes. So desired outcomes are the ones that occur in the event, the one that correspond to the event. Number of desired outcomes. Desired outcomes. Now, what is the event in this case? Event is right here. Event is that person has a birthday on the first day of a month. Well, how many days like that do we have in a year? So it can be January 1st, or it can be February 1st, March 1st, April 1st, and so on and so forth. So how many days like that? Well, it's 12 days, right? So in our event, first day of a month, we have 12 days, 12 outcomes. And that fraction gives us probability. It's not very convenient to look at the probability in the fraction form, so we're going to convert it to, to a decimal. So to convert this fraction to a decimal, we simply have to take the numerator and divide by the denominator, 365. Okay, so here it is. That's the probability. Let's round to three decimal places. That's going to be point zero three and then three. Now, after we converted our fraction to a decimal, the decimal can be converted to percentage. And it's usually a common way of describing probability. So that is the same as point. Remember, we have to move decimal point two places to the right. So it's 3.3% chance. Okay, so that's a common way of representing probability. Now, when we say 3.3% chance that the randomly selected person would have a person on the first month, on the first day of a month, um, we have a feeling that, well, it's a very small chance, right? 3.3, not, not very large, definitely. And that's a small chance. But still, what's the other way we can interpret this result? So it makes a little bit more sense what it means 3.3% chance or what it means that probability is 0.033. Well, that's how we can say it. We can say that out of 1,000 randomly selected people, we can expect, based on this proportion, out of 1,000 randomly selected people, we can expect approximately 33 of them have birthdays on the first day of a month. Let's write this down. OK. 
Okay, so here it is. Out of 1,000 randomly selected people, we can expect approximately 33 of them have birthdays on the first day of, of the month. Now, why did I say, why did I say out of 1,000? Well, it's just because the way I rounded the decimal, I rounded up to thousands, right? So if I read the decimal, it's 33 thousands. That's why I used 1,000 here and 33 over here. If I rounded my decimal to two decimal places right here, that would be three hundreds, right? Then I would rephrase the sentence and I would say, out of 100 randomly selected people, we'll, we can expect approximately, well, in this case, approximately three of them to have birthdays on the first day of a month. And with that interpretation, we have even better feeling of what that probability indicates. Let's try one more example. This time, or the second question, um, this time it says, determine the probability that the randomly selected person was born in December. So we want to find probability that the person was born in December. Okay, we're setting up the fraction. Once again, the denominator is the total number of all possible out outcomes. There is still uh, 365 days and 365 possible outcomes. But what is the numerator? So the numerator will always correspond to our event or how many outcomes we have in the event. December. How many days do we have in December? So that means that the event is that if a per person has birthday on December 1st, or December 2nd, or 3rd, or 4th, and so on and so forth. So how many days like that? Well, it's 31. And that's how we find probability in this case. Um, once again, if we convert it to decimal, we're going to get 31 divided by 365 rounded to three decimal places. It's 0 0.085, or same as 8.5% chance. If And if I want to interpret this result, I would say out of 1,000 randomly selected people, we can expect how many of them having birthdays in December? Well, it's going to be 85 this time. Out of 1,000 randomly selected people, we can expect approximately, approximately 85 of them have birthdays in December. And the last part of this question is the following. Determine the probability that a randomly selected person has a birthday on November 8th. So that's the event, right? Probability that person has birthday on November 8th. That is the event. Here it was event, December. Let's set up the fraction. The denominator is still 365. But what's going to be the numerator? Remember, the numerator always corresponds to this event. How many outcomes in this event? So in other words, in the, in the context of this problem, how many days we have in this event? Well, November 8th, it's just one day, right? So that means that the numerator here is going to be 1. And even without computing probability, we can have a sense that the chance that if you randomly select a person, that person would have it on their birthday on November 8th, it's very, very small chance, right? But let's see what, what it's going to be mathematically expressed. Um, so if we divide 1 by 365, we, can, we will get 0 0.003, rounded to three decimal places. And that's the same as what percent? Moving decimal point two places to the right, gives us 0.3% chance. So it's it's even less than 1%. 1, 1%. So 0.3% chance that a randomly selected person would have a birthday on November 8th. And interpret this um, using a sentence, we would say out of 1,000 randomly selected people, we can expect approximately three of them have birthdays on on November 8th. So that's how we use equally likely probability formula to calculate probability of events that are equally likely.